Justin, let me set the stage real quick. Yes, sir. It's the beginning of November. Temperatures are hot to the point where you're putting your warm gear yes. away and getting out the light gear. Do you save your vacation days? Do you continue to hunt? What do you do? I'm getting asked that question a lot. People are like, gosh, do I go home? Do I stay? Do I keep hunting? Do I hunt all day? Do I hunt do all I day? Hunt evenings, only mornings? The answer is always just go hunt and hunt as much as you can because early part of November, doesn't matter what the weather is, the deer are still going to be moving and we're going to show you an awesome hunt that Todd just had yesterday in hot conditions to prove it. Well, November the 4th, when the big boys finally start coming out, right? Got these warm temperatures coming in, which is going to slow things down for sure. I mean, the difference between yesterday morning and this morning, it's got to be almost 20 plus degrees. This stand here I call the highway. It's on this side hill between two bedding areas, and they just run back and forth between the two bedding areas. It's just a great rut spot. Doe come running in. I was on the phone with Kurt. Because his video just went live, so I wanted to call to see if he liked it. And I'm talking to him, and all of a sudden that doe came running in. I was like, oh boy. But it was just that little fork horn.
kick butt encounter that was. That right there was one of my hitless bucks on this property. I just couldn't get the best shot. He was moving pretty quick. He came up through here and I didn't stop him because I was hoping that he was going to get the wind in his favor and come right in front of me here. But he ended up going further down and then stopping. So, yeah. It was a risk I took in hopes that he was going to come hit this other scrape because the my wind's going that way and I thought for sure he'd come right around this way and I got a lane right here which would have been perfect. He got too far down there and they got a little spooky. But man, I hit those antlers together and it wasn't, it couldn't have been a minute later. And I saw him all the way across the ravine. Went down, he got a drink. I clashed him together one more time and boom, he came running up here. He must have been bedded there all morning. That's unbelievable. That's who I came in here for. Why do you gotta go that way? Don't go that way. Well, I get that really big one come through. This is called my highway stand. And I just couldn't get a good shot of the big one this morning where I wanted him to. I wanted him to be a little closer. I thought for sure he was going to come up here, but he ended up just going that way. But one of the other bucks that I came in here for just showed up. And he's bedded down with the dome. It's 55, 60 yards from me, max. I just need that doe to cooperate. They just got in here. There was a spiker circling, and there's like a three and a half year old. That's kind of giving them a hard time, too, so.
big boy is bedded down over here to the left. That's the smaller bug who's getting antsy. It's been about an hour now. That first big buck that came in here, I just could not get the ultimate shot that I wanted. It just didn't work out. So, he ended up going that way. In the meantime, this other buck that I came in this spot for was pushing a doe and pushed her all the way up into this bedding area here. There were two other bucks with him. He's now bedded right there. I mean, it's like 55 yards max. He's just totally bedded. I don't know where the doe went. She's nearby. I just, I can't find her. She's in that thicket. So, and then the buck that went by that morning, he came back. I thought for sure he was going to go in there and give him a hard time, but maybe they've already squared off once and he doesn't want to deal with it. But for right now, I'm pinned down, and I guess I'm just sitting here for the rest of the day. And that's the rut for you. One minute, you think you're golden. The next minute, poof, they're all gone. Oh. That big one was there, bedded the, with that doe that whole time I've been sitting here. And for whatever reason, the doe got up and she just didn't like the pressure of those other two bucks. Man, cause the other, the one that I wanted to get got up and you know, he made a scrape, he was moving around, things were great. Then as soon as she poked her head up, the other two bucks just totally pushed her. And man, she just bolted. I mean, she just, usually she just, they just walk away and the, the more dominant buck would push the other two away. But man, she just didn't like it and literally just poof, took off like a rocket ship and they all, they're all gone. Well, there was just way too much activity. Not to go back to that spot this evening. So I'm heading in there right now. Man, man. It is. It is a lot hotter than I thought. I mean, it's 70, 74 degrees right now.
I was this sneaking close. The doe came right here. The doe came right by me. She was right below me. That was awesome. I mean, this, this will be a day that I won't forget. It's amazing. Hmm. Hunt. It's simple. <laughs> I mean, it, it, right. But if we had to give some tips, right? All right. It's the first week of November, first 10 days of November, and it's hot. What is your, wh where are you going? Where are you going to sit? Well, a couple things. This particular spot, I didn't choose this spot because of this, but actually seeing what the deer were doing kind of led me to think more about this. The sun doesn't really get to this spot because it is, it's, it's, a, it's a western slope. So it really the sun doesn't start beating down on this spot until later in the day. Yep. So I think what helped in this particular case, if you want to add up little tips, is I think the deer knew it generally was going to be a little bit cooler side of a sit. It wasn't like it's zero degrees out and you want to go find them on a south facing sure. you know, you know, hillside. So this area stayed a little bit cooler. There is water not far away. And I, I think, think those water's are definitely going to oh, be big key. Time. I mean, if you've got a good water source when it's warm, these bucks are moving a lot. They're going to be moving all day, which means they're going to want to drink somewhere. Yes. Um, so if you have a water source that's concentrating deer activity, that's certainly a great spot. Um, for me, I think it's all about just keying in on those does, right? I mean, right now, like all that information that you've got about where you see does, where you see does come out of, where you think they're betting at, that's where you want to be. And downwind side of doe bedding areas. And don't cross out those dumb spots. I, I mean, I can't, the dumb spots, I mean, I, and I, we talk about this, but man, even being close to buildings and stuff sounds crazy, but they're being harassed. I mean, the does are being harassed. The does are being sure. harassed 100%. If they can come to a little spot where they're just less likely that big buck to maybe just go hang out. I, man, I see that. Well, the all other the thing time. that we see a lot is the bigger bucks when they get on those first hot does, which make no mistake, they're the first does are in estrus, right being now. actively bred right now. Those bigger, bigger bucks will tend to kind of corral them into areas, push them into some of those weird little pockets of woods out in the middle of a yep. field somewhere that you would normally overlook. So, you know, keep your eyes open, look for tracks, look for running tracks, find the does, water. That's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Me too. You? <laughs> Me too. Me too. Get out in the woods and hunt. It's I November. Agree.